here is a trigonometry question now, and this is a identity. Okay. So this one looks pretty straightforward. It's only for three marks. So I think we should start on the left-hand side. Hmm. Ah, this is actually quite an interesting one. What I normally tell learners to do is whenever they get a sin 2x, you should always expand it using this over here. So that would give us 1 minus 2 sin x cos x. Then at the bottom, there's nothing we can really do. Okay. Now, can you see that we are quite stuck at the moment. It doesn't seem like there is anything that we can do. There is no cos 2x. So we seem like we're pretty stuck. So I don't normally do this in these types of questions. Usually we don't want to do this. But because it doesn't seem like there's anything else we can do, I think we need to go to this one over here. And we need to go back to grade 11, where we can remember that that is sin squared x plus cos squared x is always equal to 1. Why am I doing that? Normally, we would not do it like that. But the only reason is, is that it doesn't seem like there's anything else that we can do. That is why I've decided we should try to do that. So what happens now is that um, that will become sin squared x plus cos squared x minus 2 sin x cos x over sin x minus cos x. Now, guys, you need to become very familiar with finding things that look like this, a square, a square, and then a combination of both of them. Think about this. If I gave you x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, you could easily factorize this as x minus y and another x minus y. You need to become familiar with looking at these types of things where there's a square and another square, and then they put the combination in the middle with the two. It's always like that. So that is what I'm sort of seeing um, over here. So what I would do next is I would rearrange it to look a little bit better for myself. So that would become sin squared x minus 2 sin x cos x plus cos squared x over sin x minus cos x. OK, and so we can now see that at the top, we have one of those situations where you have a square and a square, and then in the middle, you have a combination. All that you do then is you open up two brackets, and it will become sin x and sin x, cos x and cos x, and then a minus and a minus. If you had to multiply that out, you would see that it will eventually give you this part at the, at the top. Then at the bottom, we still have sin x minus cos x. And then it's easy from here on out because now we can cancel one of these with one of these. And so we are left with an answer of sin x minus cos x. And so therefore the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side.